So Time have brought out their best inventions of 2023, and there's about 200 of them. And they're split along the lines of categories. So there's things like AI, medical, beauty, household. And the particular one I'm interested in, there's a category for green energy. And in green energy, strangely enough, there are two thermal batteries. One is Antora thermal battery, and the other is Bren Miller Energy B-Gen. Now, thermal batteries do exactly what they say on the tin. They store heat, and they can be as simple as things like rocks or bricks or pebbles or sand or water. You basically heat them up, and then they stay hot and radiate that heat out over a time. Think of a hot water bottle. Of course, to do something like that on an industrial scale, where we're going to serve our energy needs, needs a little bit more finesse. And Antora... The technology behind that is truly astounding. What they do is they use electrical heaters to heat up carbon blocks until they're glowing white hot. And we can get the energy back out in one of two ways. We can either get it back out as heat, or we can get it out as electricity. The way to get it out as heat is to pump molten metal through the whole system and use that molten metal to boil water up to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. The way to get it out as electricity is to use something called a thermovoltaic cell. Now, thermovoltaic cells operate in the same way as photovoltaic cells. But instead of using sunlight, they use the light from the glowing carbon bricks. They are bounced around a chamber and generate. Behind those cells are little mirrors making sure that none of that light escapes, that it passes through and through the thermovoltaic cells, improving the efficiency incredibly. Of course, doing a job like pumping molten metal isn't something you can do with a standard pump. MIT have developed a range of pumps using ceramics and graphite in a gear arrangement to pump metals, and their current record is at 2,000 degrees centigrade, which is incredible when you think about it. So that pumping of metal and the use of the glowing bricks to directly produce energy allows that energy out from the Antora system however you want it, whether you want it directly as heat or you want it to generate electricity. Truly groundbreaking stuff. So where Antora has gone down the route of glowing white hot carbon stroke graphite bricks pumping liquid metal and thermophotovoltaics, Bren Miller have gone a different route. They're doing something that's much simpler, and that's in inverted commas, of course, because none of these systems are simple. And what they're using is crushed rock. They use some crushed rock and heat it from a variety of sources. Of course, it can be heated from electricity when it's at uh, high supply, low demand, but they can also use things like exhaust gases and flue gases, so there's a degree of decoupling. They heat up the rocks using a source of heating, and then to get the energy back, they pull water through it. The water is raised to 750 degrees centigrade as steam and that steam can be used directly in the process for process heating or of course to run a turbine. Now what they say is that 30% of energy used by industry is just for process heat, it's just for heating things up to run the process and that's where the win is. They have several implementations of this across the world with their largest at 4 gigawatts opening this year. Of course the B-Gen is strikingly similar to Polar Knight, the Finnish company that was the core celeb last year for their sand battery which they're installing all over Finland. So why bother with all this tedious mucking around with heat storage? Why not just stick up some batteries and be done with it? Well. The answer is, in industry, cost is king. For lithium-ion batteries, you're looking at somewhere between $50 and $150 per kilowatt hour. Pumped hydro is somewhere between $50 to $80 a kilowatt hour. And pumped heat storage is somewhere between $35 and $50 a kilowatt hour. What Antora say is that their system is one-tenth of the price of lithium-ion batteries and comparable in the amount of energy it can store. Because again, cost is king. Efficiency isn't the real issue. The efficiency of your system can drop down as far as 35% and still be cost competitive. 
Now, although these solutions have been touted for industry, you've got to remember that grid is an industry, albeit a very conservative one. And as these solutions get more widespread and adopted and used, you can bet your bottom dollar that grid is going to get in on the game. And of course, that's going to have a knock-on effect on the price of electricity and CO2 emissions. It's also doable at a DIY level. It was very popular in the 70s and 80s. You basically dug a big hole and chucked some rocks in there. Then in the summer you blew the hot air over the rocks, heated the rocks, and in winter you blew the cold air over the rocks and warm air would warm your house. So varieties of thermal store and thermal batteries have been around for quite a while and being used in house building and are now being adopted on an industrial scale, which is pretty pleasing to see. Finally, these same new ideas are coming out of the laboratory and research and being put into practice. To my mind, they certainly deserve their time recognition for being the best invention or one of the best inventions in 2023. Anyway, I thought I'd report that to you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.